In the meantime, I want to get down to the New York Stock Exchange. And, Jim, of course, we've been paying attention to the jobs numbers. I want your view on that. But I want to start with uh, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. I want to read you. This is Henry Blodgett just in the past hour on Twitter. He says, if the panic bank run puts SVB in real jeopardy and SVB can't raise private funds to cover the hole, the government will almost certainly bail it out. Shareholders will get poleaxed, he called, he said. But ironically, the risk to depositors is actually small. What do you think? Henry's got a line on it. I mean, this bank is the bank to startups. It's the bank to people who have illiquid securities that were unfortunately loaned against. So he could be right. But, you know, this is one of those where why don't we wait until we see? I mean, we've got a couple of minutes. I, I, I've learned enough in my, my lifetime that if I have to wait 11 minutes for an answer, I'd rather wait 11 minutes. How concerned are you about this bank versus what we're seeing across across the board? You look at some of the other regional banks that those stocks have fallen uh, quite precipitously. Do investors know something uh, that maybe depositors don't? Well, look, a lot of these banks have uh, some commercial real estate exposure. A lot of them may have the wrong duration on the portfolios, meaning that they're really much more sensitive than to these rate hikes and the Fed moves so quickly. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank is unique because they were always willing to lend against securities that haven't come public yet. So you could even call them you know, pre-IPO. No one had that exposure. So uh, they are unique, uh, just like Silvergate was unique with crypto. Right. But I do think that they're big enough to be more like what Art Cashin said. It does feel like Penn Square, maybe uh, hoping to be con- contained before it gets to Continental Illinois. Right. Uh, the bigger story today, Jim, is uh, we don't know yet. It could be SVB. It could be the jobs report. Normally, it would be the jobs report. What do you think? Well, look, the jobs report is important because we have bigger uh, labor participation rate. Uh, we could quibble over how much wages went up. I don't know. I like to be more granular. The big gains were in travel and leisure, which is still below ni- uh, 2019. But that's the industry, the last industry that's really growing. I like the fact that data center looks like it was down because that's warehousing, transportation. There's enough in here for the Fed to say, you know what, we can do 25. We don't need to do 50, particularly because of the duration of the portfolios of the regionals, which is what I care about most other than the fact that Silicon Valley loves to lend against against companies that might come public in order to be able to get into business. Just to merge these two topics together, if you like 25 basis points better than 50, there's other people who might say that the SVB of it all might actually push towards the 25 basis points because maybe the Fed doesn't want to push too hard. Well, I think that now that we know all the duration risk, we've got to be concerned that the Fed is forcing banks to go from um, help for sale. You know, look, we don't want these. We don't want a three-year Treasury, three-year Treasury holding to destroy the banking system. It's crazy. Right. Just because he raised it so quickly doesn't mean you know this, it wasn't reckless to put money in the three-year. Remember, it's duration that we're talking about, which is, has to do with sensitivity of what the Fed does. And right. so the Fed ought to cool it to make it less sensitive.